The Herb Feed Centre has three dialogues a year and this is the first one for 2021 and tonight the topic is going to be about Australia-Indonesia relations as we go beyond 2021. Indonesia is so important to Australia for so many reasons. Not only is it one of our nearest neighbours, it's our largest neighbour and it has a history of engagement with Australia for such a long time. There were Aboriginal people who were trading with people from Makassar and other areas in Indonesia. So we've always had a connection. Relations between our two countries are very resilient. Sometimes people have thought, oh, they're a little bit fragile, but they're not. Increasingly, the two countries are talking together about challenges they see elsewhere in the world or elsewhere in the region. There's a focus a lot on what we can do together that we couldn't do as well on our own. Indonesia is really important in terms of our regional stability and our economic prosperity as well because um, we are so close to each other. When um, the region is stable, then Australia will also benefit from that. You'd be hard pushed to find two neighbouring societies that are as different as Indonesia and Australia anywhere in the world. It's precisely that difference that makes us interesting to each other, that gives us economic and social and cultural complementarity so that we've got things to offer each other. We're endlessly grateful to Indonesia for enabling the opportunities we have had and we will have to work collaboratively with Indonesia in education and research now and into the future. What do young Australians and Australians generally know about Indonesia is still unfortunately pretty limited. On one hand, there are young Australians who are not really engaged in Indonesia and have misconceptions about the region. However, on the other hand, there are also many Asia-capable young Australians who know a lot about Indonesia and continue to engage in Indonesia and continue to stay involved through AYA and other initiatives. Uh, I thought Australians were very individualistic, but it turns out that you guys are love to say hi, to, you know, ask how each other's going, which was give me the impression of, you know, feeling like home when I first came to Australia. So people to people relation can balance the relationship and can continue to find ways strengthening bilateral relations. I'm a diplomat, I believe in collaboration and uh, cooperation. And I believe that with that, we not only grow together, but then we can contribute more to the region and as well to, to the global. Keep investing in what's worked, multiply that success. There are things out there that are working, but they're also struggling without the right funding, without the right exposure. And so that's really, I think, the key. It takes a whole of system effort to really lift up those opportunities that are working and focus on the good, focus on the awesome and the possible. There are so many opportunities for graduates from Monash and from other universities to engage with Indonesia. Lots of linkages with infrastructure, with health, that we can be looking at both countries to work out where the best practice is, how we can learn from each other. And I think our graduates are really equipped to be able to look at those opportunities and, and find for themselves really fulfilling careers. The most important thing to get to know each other is the will, you know, you know what I mean? Like the will to get to know, the will to know more about Indonesians. Of course, there is a room for improvement, namely in the economic field. We would like very much to see that Australia as neighboring countries can become top five of countries that have very strong presence in Indonesia. The other big game changer for the next decade as we map out the future or try and map out the future is the Indonesia-Australia Comprehensive Economic Partnership, i.e. CHEPA. Areas in particular that i.e. CHEPA I think opens up for business is private health care, tourism infrastructure, anything to do with uh, digital startups and the digital economy education, particularly vocational education and training, and renewable energy. And this is going to be a big focus of the future. The most exciting thing is in the education sector. Indonesia's making a big push 
to strengthen its education system from top to bottom. But the part that Monash cares most about is the fact that Indonesia has opened itself up to foreign universities to come by invitation to set up in Indonesia. And the first will be Monash University. We're really extremely proud at Monash to be the first foreign university invited and approved by the Indonesian government to establish a campus in Indonesia. And we have great hopes for that campus based in Jakarta. It will be research intensive, industry engaged. It will be focused on postgraduate degrees, masters and PhD degrees, as well as ongoing professional and executive development. We can see not only the opportunities for this bilateral relationship growing further and beyond that, we see that being lived in our students. I think in this regard, Her Faith Centre can play an important role, promoting understanding through people to people. I think it's important and that is an important role to play. I think that the more perspectives we have in the region, the richer our conversations will be. The Herb Feed Centre is incredibly important as a conduit for strengthening and growing and maintaining connections between Australia and Indonesia. It is a really important flagship centre of the Faculty of Arts. It really is just the sort of depth and breadth of cultural engagement that makes, makes the links that are important between Australia and Indonesia. Let's capitalise on that momentum and build that. And it's only with friends that we can build a future in the region. And Indonesia is our best friend in the region.